Oh, <clears throat> Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang uh, today. Beautiful Rishikesh. And welcome to all of you who are joining us, all the friends around the world who are joining us for today's Satsang. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Very good. As we are drawing towards the end of the season, I would like that somehow those of you who choose to put questions, no? that they are more in connection with the guidance you have been receiving. And if you have some doubts or some uh, struggle or misunderstanding around that, this is very welcomed. But I'm not being totally strict about it, it's just I'm saying. Because uh, it is enough, actually. If, in fact, your search is for truth, and truth being what is discovered within your own self, 
It cannot merely be something that you discovered apparently external to yourself. Because if there is something that we discover that is seemingly external, it will require something to keep it. Whatever you gained fresh, you may lose. But if you discover that within you, which is older and timeless beyond the wildest dreams of your person, then trust that and it will not be found as an object, something separate or apart from you. And this season I am so pleased about it because the capacity you have shown to follow enables the satsangs to drive in more deeply to the extent that it is my feeling that it is being recognized, digested and assimilated inside your own being. Not merely as some mental construct or a group of some kind of technical advice or anything like that. It must be that what you are discovering is what does not need another support from somewhere else. If we have come to final seeing, it should not be depending on something else. In the truth, there is nothing else behind truth. It is not merely uh, some uh, sacred cluster of golden concepts. It is not concepts. Concepts can merely point towards it. The rest you must see and recognize intuitively. And I believe, not just I believe, because what arises out of that seeing is an energy field of peace without you being a, keep, a peacekeeper, you may say. But the peace is your perfume the joy and the silence. You may not be able to put words to what is happening because it is as though grace and truth and love, I don't, I don't want to say that the truth is transmitted, but something is recognized beyond the capacity of the mind to explain that you will feel the change within you and come to know that there isn't someone who has to look after that change. So, My choice is not that I'm looking for this golden person. I don't know. It could be just about anyone, you know. Okay. But it must be something a burning for truth and for clarity. Today, can I start with you over there? Yeah. Just come. I want to tell you ahead of time, I will not be able to answer every hand that goes up but I have answered you. If it is your mind that is in your hand, you may not be called. Please. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Deva Maheshwara, Guru Shakshat, Param Brahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namaste Guruji Namaste Allah. From the place of being my deepest gratitude to you oh. I had to shout out because somehow 
but your pointings I'm following since 2015, so I'm not new. Uh, All your pointings uh, and okay. invitation. Yeah. And last year I mailed you that I was stuck at one point, what next? And you freed me from there, you read my mail and, and I feel now nothing and I'm joyful, loveful. Yeah. I have no question, oh. but I have to confirm that everything, what, whatever is happening, is happening automatically. Like a device is placed somewhere, yeah. auto deletion. So nothing is in my pocket. But uh, with your permission, I like to share how I reached to this time in Rishikesh. Will you allow me two minutes? You know, okay. um, uh, life was great since 2006. Um, I'm a seeker, seeker since 2006. And from 2013, I found that peace and I confirmed with all of pointings since 2015. I, I think I never missed none of your videos, not a single word. And I can see you, I can hear you, I can feel you. Still, I had to come up. Yeah. And uh, also, I, I need to uh, offer love and gratitude to Sangha members and YouTube. Uh, the vibe from the YouTube is not less than what I'm getting here. But in person, I don't know that is a desire still or a pure wish. Uh, this time, I was determined that I have to come because last year you didn't appear here. Mm. And somewhere in August uh, 2018, I thought I had to go to Portugal. Then in January 20th, my mom was hospitalized. And she was 82, and uh, forgive me, actually, she was the only obstacle and hurdle on my path. Every time she thinks, she thought that I'm spiritual, something, some, some alien like that, uh, who is other than anyone. So she was hospitalized in a critical condition, and I knew that I had to come. I somehow had a, a vision that she will go she will pass away by 12th of February, and your satsang will begin from 13th. But my mom wanted me to do the rituals, you know, in Hindu dharmas, I don't believe in those, but she wanted me to do the rituals to put the fire on her face like that. So I had to keep that promise being elder daughter, but deep down my soul wants to be here in Rishikesh. So I, I was praying kind of that God, or dear Muji, please let her be free. This time I need to go. And from 13th of February, I left everything. I, I didn't pray even. I lev left everything at your feet. And the voice came from within. You, you were saying to me that Sampurna, you cannot give any more time to your mom. You must arrange for the flight ticket and book your hotel as soon as possible. So I called my daughter in North Bengal and she did it, everything for me. My mom passed away on 20th of February. Nothing, it feels nothing happened. Everything was arranged, perfect order. Everything is happening. So auspicious, and this, this now moment is so auspicious, and it is all because of you, I am here in Rishikesh. And um, 12 days we had to do the rituals. I didn't do anything, but 12 days we had to stay there. So everything is, was finished by 4th of March, so I flew on 6th of March. That was your, all of your grace, grace from the existence. And another thing i like to share with you, if you allow, uh, a poem came from me, from existence. I, I cannot uh, say to you that I wrote it to you. I wrote it. I didn't. I wrote it, but still, some something it, says it that. It looks like a very long one. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no? Okay. no, for for your uh, convenience, I have tried to translate. Okay. Mm, if you allow me, uh, can I? Uh, get started. Oh. Let's see. Okay. It's kind of song. Can I? Uh, or or I can even. Uh, you want to sing? Yeah, uh, I'd, uh, I'd love to. Okay. Is it like a sing? Okay. First, I, I want to translate it. Okay. okay. It says, even it is, it is written not even my own language. My mother tongue is Bengali. 
not even English, not even Hindi, but the song came in Hindi or Urdu or something like that. Some of the words meaning even I don't know. I try to translate. Kaise gaun tere gun, guru meri saiya. How can I sing your glory, my beloved, O Guruji? Myself is just like a flute, and you, Guru, is the one who plays the flute. Without a master, life is like eyes without vision. Like a flute just remains without sur or tune, without a flute player. No need of japas, no need of shadhana, no need of bhajans even. Guru is not the body, the person, or deity. The whole existence is your guru. One who knows this truth, why should one go to any temple to do the rituals? You just drink the divine nectar of guru energy timelessly, morning and evening. Guru will open everyone's inner eye for that eternal knowledge of self. The vast ocean of love is at your feet of Guru. Guru is my God. Guru is my best known friend and only one in oneness of love and peace. Guru appears before us like this, like this ages after ages, hiding behind different faces. And then the praises like, all are my Guru, Guru is my Shiva. If you allow now, I will sing a few lines. Can I drink a little bit of water? Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, Guruji. Okay. Because I somehow I knew that, that this is this moment today is now or never. Yeah, sing. Kaise gaun tere gun? Kaise gaun tere gun? Guru mori saiya. Kaise gaun tere gun? Guru mori saiya. Main to ek basuri hu. Guru Basuriya, main to ek Basuri hu. Guru Basuriya, bina Guru ji ban hai, jote bin akhiya, jaise ek Basuri hai. Bin Basuriya Jaisi ek Basuri hai Bin Basuriya Na jap na tap Bhajan na lagat Na jap na tap भजन ना लागत ना ही सिर्फ मूरत गुरु सारे जगत ना ही सिर्फ मूरत गुरु सारे जगत जो जाने सो मंदिर में क्यों बजाये खंजरिया गुरु नाम सुधा पियो शाम सवरिया गुरु नाम सुधा पियो शाम सवरिया गुरु सब का खोलेगा ज्ञान कुठरिया गुरु चरणन में है प्रेम की दरिया गुरु मोरी ईश्वर गुरु मोरी अल्लाह गुरु मोरी भगवान गुरु साईं मौला गुरु मोरी महेश्वर गुरु दुर्गा मैया गुरु मोरी घनश्याम गुरु मोरी गोपाला कहे ये साधक 
सुनो मेरे साथिया गुरु परम पराओ की मुझी आदि दरिया गुरु परम पराओ की मुझी आदि दरिया ओम मुझी बोलो ओम मुझी बोलो मुझी बाबा बोलो ओम अरुणा चलो ओम मुझी बोलो ओम मुझी बोलो मुझी बाबा बोलो ओम अरुणा चलो मुझी बाबा बोलो मुझी बाबा बोलो मुझी बाबा बोलो मुझी बाबा बोलो पापा जी बोलो ओम अरुणा चलो अम अरुणा चल ओम अरुणा चल Thank you. I love you, Guruji. Raj, love you too. Thank you. Okay. Okay. First to the microphone. I won't do that again. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Guruji. Thank you, darling. I don't so much have a question as I just feel I've, I just need to stand in front of you and I don't know. I see. I see um, something that's holding on that doesn't want to let go. Would that something that doesn't want to let go? Would that be you or something else? Sometimes it feels like it's me, mm. but that's that's the problem. Mm. Yeah. If it's only sometimes it feels like you, and other times it feels like something else, it's not you. Everybody has this thing. As long as you are identified. And believe your identity to be a personal, and to be this body and this sense of a person, then doubts will somehow linger around this. It's not a blame. It's just, it's a fact. In fact, so it, it's understandable. You see, uh, when I asked before whether the the one who experiences these things, hmm, this sense of doubts and if something is holding on and so on, no. Whether that sense of being of holding on, or holding onness, and the one who is saying, uh, "I don't know," sometimes, sometimes, are either of these stable states. You see, yeah. and then you will have a sense that it is something you perceive. It is a wave, a feeling, or a state that you experience. But very little energy goes to confirm that the one who witnessed that, if there is a witnessing, there must be some distance. If there is some distance between the thing that is witnessed and the thing that is witnessing, then they cannot be one and the same thing. No? That was the beginning of any true discovery uh, and the proof that what you are looking at cannot be who and what you really are. It is an object or a phenomenon appearing in your consciousness. I always speak like that. So the sense of something holding on will always come from the mind. There was something, you know, yes, something is still happening there, because you, you, something is interested in that. 
There's something, oh yeah, there's something that wants to go here. And, uh, so I, you can be in that way for quite some time, it just happens. Mm. Uh, something, if you did not give importance to it, it could not linger. But something is feeling that maybe it is something worth finding out what that is. But it's nothing at all. It's not worth uh, the time you spend on it. If it is something that is really of real value, then by grace it will be revealed to you what it is. But if you have the feeling that, you know, there's something wrong but I don't know what it is, don't waste your time with it. If it is something of value, there's something that comes from grace, it will bring it through your experience to identify what that is, so you can clearly look at your position from there. But if it's just some vagueness in your mind, don't waste time with these things. I, f I felt that I needed to just come before you and say that because I've never actually come to you in satsang before and something was yes. lingering about that. A trio. Okay, let me hear what you have to I say. I need Russian There's translation. A Russian as well translation. No, okay. Um, Russian translation. Russians are coming. Okay. Я приехала сюда впервые. До этого я много слушала тебя, и я услышала. Сидата, can you come to the side so she can be aware of your presence there? Good, good. Okay. She says, I came here for the first time, but before I heard you a lot. But before what? I, I was listening. I okay. was listening a lot. Okay. Yeah, like this is good. No, no. <coughs> I think it's better you just talk between yourselves here now. Um, I don't know if that really m makes a difference to those who are translating, but it, for the room, it makes it much more simple and direct if you just talk and he translate. И на первом же моем сатсанге я услышала от тебя эти слова «Нечто великое есть в вас», и они сразу вот упали в меня. Uh, on the very first uh, satsang, I heard from you these words «Something great is inside of you», and these uh, words came very deep inside of, of me. И я люблю Раману читать, и откуда-то вдруг выскочила тоже фраза «Величайшее наслаждение всех небес – это ничто». And I love to read Ramana, and from uh, somewhere came his phrase uh, «The greatest pleasure of the world is nothing». nothing. The, the greatest delight of the world is nothing. Это ощущение впервые в моей жизни, что я познала, что такое милость Гуру, и действительно перешла от веры к какому-то знанию опытному. And for the first time in my life I feel this uh, feeling that I know what is uh, grace really. And, uh, перешла от веры к знанию. And I came from uh, belief to knowledge. И потом ты говорил очень сильно об этой внутренней борьбе, об этих сорока днях, которые наступят. Я чувствую, что они наступят, когда я приеду домой. 
And I remember you was talking about 40 days and 40 nights. And I feel when I will come home, these 40 days and 40 nights will come for me. Will come for you? They should have already started, no? Они должны уже были начаться. Ну, безусловно, но пугает особенно то, что дома, то, что и я хочу еще. For sure, it is like this, uh, but uh, what is frightening me more is what uh, will happen when I will come home. No, no, you don't know what's going to happen when you go home. Forget about it. Не знаешь, что произойдет, когда ты вернешься домой, yeah. забудь да, об этом. именно это я и хотела сказать. I would like to, I don't, I want to stop for a moment and see if you can follow me today. Otherwise, I'm following you and it's not working. Just, uh, if you are speaking about what will happen when you go home, you're using your attention in the wrong way. I'm sorry, I have to put it like that. Если ты говоришь о том, что произойдет, когда ты вернешься домой, ты неправильно используешь свое внимание сейчас. Yeah, yeah. Something has to be clear in you now. Forget about later. Later does not exist. Later will be something your mind will project and cover whatever the true seeing will be later will become a projection from your mind. So you need to drop all of these things. Тут должно. You 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 want to put your ear ear things back in? You see, this is the kind of thing that is happening. That if you have some loyalty <coughs> to your your mind's game, you are not actually listening to what I'm speaking. It's already telling you later, you know, but always going to be later and so on. This is complete. You're wasting your time here if you don't catch it. And maybe you have been doing this for a long time. You are here in body, but your head is in some projection and you're not hearing what is happening here. I am not giving you a prescription for later. Oh, maybe. Um, I'm pointing to you about something which, if you recognize now, it is timelessly true in you, not a belief. Then I want to hear you even more now. Then don't give any more attention to your thoughts and uh, your self-image and self-assessment. You need to just cut this. The, the doors of the train is closing. On which side are you? <laughs> we are in the final few days, if you want to say like that. There is no time to be working on your person. This we have done all your life. And what has been the outcome? What has been the outcome? The real outcome should be, it should come out. You should be free of that molestation. Your person cannot produce your freedom. I have this uh, longing for freedom. The longing must lead somewhere. You cannot just be longing, longing, longing. Eh? The journey must end somewhere. You cannot be journey, 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 journey. It has to come somewhere. Where are you trying to reach? Hmm? The thing you are trying to find, in what direction we must go? What direction you must go? The thing you are trying to reach, at what distance from you is it? If you tell me what distance, then we can find out which direction we can use a compass. North we go, northwest, east, south, southeast, southwest. What direction you must go to find the thing you are searching for? And how far is it we must travel? What transportation we must take? Aeroplane, helicopter, what we must do? Train, car, roller skates, bicycle, what? 
Can we walk there? I have to, to put it like this. Because the mind is projecting all kinds of things, uh, yes, but you, you, yeah, you must continue and you must do this and you know, yes, maybe after another three lifetimes, you may get it. What is all of this? Foolishness, foolishness, foolishness. You give a lot of your attention, foolishness. It has not helped you. The mind's guidance has not helped you. It just kept you on the road and it will keep on sending you on other journeys and journeys and journeys. From where are you leaving? Why don't you pay attention where you are right now before you make one step in any direction? This is my first speaking to you. You see, I asked in the beginning, can we concern ourselves with the pointings, I have not been talking about lots of things, always coming back to look. All that you think, all that you perceive, all that you imagine, all that you are attached to, you see, all that you believe, hmm? one day will be gone. What is that that will not be gone? All that you imagine, all that you see, all that you remember, all that you think is watched in you. Be at the place of the watching and don't give so much energy into the things appearing. The things appearing, we've been always talking about the movie of your mind, this thing and this person and the judgments that is created, but they are not reliable. All that are variables. Where is the constant? All you looking at this, this and this thing and this and everybody is telling the story of their projection. And the one who these voices are talking to and is listening, yeah, yes, yes, and I think, yeah, yeah. This one and its projections, are they true? Are they you? You see, this is simple, simple. I don't know if at any time these pointings have been made so simple and still you escape here. Yeah. What about when I go home? You know, I don't want to talk to you, to be honest. If you give away your attention so quickly, we're just pointing, but come back and look from here, you see? And you, you, your mind makes it like hard work. As I said, it's very simple. But the one seeking is very complex because it's seeking as an ego, as an identity that's going to get somewhere. And if you do this thing, you're going to get something. But whatever you get, you cannot keep because the one who will get it is not stable. Why we cannot see this thing? You want me to give you, I can give you a big book of things to read if you want, if that's what your mind wants. Be very happy. Yeah, book 500 pages, I read the uh, instructions. Maybe it wants this, because by that it purchases more time for its existence. But I, and it will not show you who you are. It would keep on pointing somewhere else. Why you don't see this? You came to satsang, you say you love Ramana Maharishi. What did Ramana, Ramana told you and you miss what he's telling you. Now you come to me, you're missing what I'm telling you. So how when you're going to go home, who's going to tell you when you go home? It's very simple. If you follow it, if you follow the simple steps, how long it will take you? But if you say, but my mind keeps coming up. Okay, mind keeps, we know that. The mind keeps coming up with more things. So basically, if you listen to everything your mind says, mind is your boss. And who are you, the one who is listening? Are you reliable also? And should that answer come from somebody else or from inside your own self? Isn't it from your own self you probably say, no, this, this kind of person identity is not reliable. Then if it's not reliable, why waste my time and your time? giving so much energy to the unreliable one. And a deeper place in you observes that, yes, I can see now, I can see that the person 
and the, its projections are connected, but from the place of looking, is the looking trapped in the bubble of that scenario, or is it something apart? I say observe with detachment, which guards you against being pulled into identity. And if something gets pulled into identity, the words will help you to say, that is also observed. It is not a movement of the weakness. You see, simple thing. I don't want to give you complex advice because I know you cannot follow them. What is happening here? I'm thirsty. You say, I'm thirsty, I'll give you water. I don't tell you the chemical makeup of water. You say, you're hungry, I'll give you a menu. Look at the menu. No, you have to get food. Now you say you want to wake up. What will you get then? So I'm only speaking like this. I'm a simple man, a simple thing. You ask something that I know is here. It's so here with you, I can't give it to you. It, what you're looking for is so here with you, I can't give this to you. I can only point out where you are sleep talking, sleep walking. You're not seeing, because you imagine it somewhere else or as a thing that grew or something can give you. They can't give you what you have, what you are. I can only help you to see that you are the thing you desire. Sometimes we have coconut head. Uh, you know? But if you have coconut head, something sees coconut head also. And that's not a coconut. Simple, simple language, you can understand this or not. Please. Um, I don't know where to start with you. I want to tell you, leave everything right now. While you're standing here, drop all this thing right now. You understand this? Okay, May if this is working, maybe yeah. you sit down for the moment. Yes. Just, just sit down for a moment and just keep listening. Okay, and please keep listening, and your translator will talk to you, and you listen like I am speaking directly to you. Okay, and I'll just move it on a little bit. Okay, just for the moment. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. What did you say? What, what, get up and let me see. It's your last day? Yeah, come as though it is your last day. Yes. Come as though it is your last day. And let me see if it's going to be your lost day. Come like it's your last and day. And don't let one lie escape my mouth, please. I want to say that all that you say is true. All that you say is true. I've, I've been listening to your satsangs for the last two years, and it is like you are sitting in my heart and just describing it as it is. Yes. And the very first time that I listened to the invitation, it, it was like two of your pointings, like all that you perceive is not you, and what you are looking for is already the place that you are looking from. They landed in my heart and revealed a seeing which is so unsparing, it just pulled the rug out of all the universes. It pulled the rug out of what I thought was me. You are a very sneaky one, Guruji. I'm a sneaky one? Yes. Yeah, I'm very sneaky, very yeah. sneaky. 
<laughs> you you say it is not a command, it is an invitation, and then you gobble us up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very tricky, very tricky, very tricky. <laughs> So what what bit remains that I didn't gobble up then? Tell me. Uh, nothing. No, nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Yeah, you know, as I was standing in the queue yesterday, the mind said, "Oh, please take me, please take me, just this this seeker, just eat me up, just eat me up." And this unsparing seeing. Yes. So but, it, uh, yes. So even there, the mind is saying, yes. please, please, just yes. swallow me up, please take me as you swallow me up. But this was also watched yes. from that unmoving place yes. within you, isn't it? Yes. And so, in yes. one place, in your dynamic field, where activity of mind and all this is moving, Something is praying. Please swallow, swallow me up. Stop this, 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 this uh, play and swallow. And yet, at the same time, deeper down, nothing is moving. Yes. In the unchanging place. Yes. Yes. And and the mindset. This is arrogance. What is arrogance? <laughs> that even this is not true. This this the truest, highest yearning is also perceived. But what to do? It is. It, it, is, it, it is. It is perceived. It is perceived, and it, nothing wrong with also prayer, yes. because prayer yes. can only take place in the dynamic place. Yes. In the non-dynamic place, there's nothing, no reason to pray. Yes. No, that is your absolute place. Yes. But in the dynamic field, in your relative existence, there's still the feeling of. Of, uh, of being and, and there's a perceiving of time and change, there's your family and all that, that can be there. That doesn't have to be, oh, that's an yes. offence, because that is not an offence to the Lord. Yes. You understand? Yes. And that is not the, oh, get rid of the family, leave all this, they're no good. No, that's your mind. Yes. You are able to perceive in your dynamic field, watch from the deep non-dynamic self of where, no? Everything is in, it becomes a harmony. Then the dynamic and the non dynamic is a harmony there. Yes. You see, but in the dynamic is in time and transformation and change. This you may witness with increased joy. Yes. Because you are not being swept away by the play of time. You yes. are watching from the timeless, and at the same time, you appear like time. It, it is fine. Don't try to get rid of oh, like the. Why am I seeing all this? And why are these people? They should not exist. And don't give it. That's your mind. It's okay. Gradually, what happens? The attraction that the the carnal self or identity, the one that the, the ego mind person, is attracted to activity to do and to get rid of the judgment and the fear and insecurities and all of that play exists for that one. But now you have discovered the deeper place of truth, which is unchanging. It is not a desiring place. It is not asking for life. It is not asking for solutions. It is beyond all these things. So now that you discover that, this dynamic place at the farthest outreach, where is the person and his world and all of his problems, which it which I say, what you are perceiving in a way is what you are conceiving, all these things, they are losing their power now. They are answering to a higher power now. It is not that the person is surviving, it is gradually merging in the deeper consciousness. And this is why your world becomes more harmonious, more peaceful. Do you need to get rid of your family to be free? Who would do that? So let it be there. You just concentrate and continuously keep on looking and confirming in your stillness. Because when you are resting in your natural stillness, you see, nothing is pulutable. And it, it, it is also in the vastness of your being 
that the dynamic play of presence and person plays. But gradually they are losing their influence, they are losing their, their fire, and their spice, because you are anchored in your own stillness. And when not, the person is not interfering and projecting and imagining, you begin to see with purer sight, and your world becomes harmonious in you. Some beings, they continue they are so focused inside that at some point the world is seen quite clearly. It is insubstantial even. It's just a play of shadows for them. And even though they have a body, they move in it, but they are not, they're not invested in the world that's seen through the mind anymore. Some are like that. Some are like that. Hmm? That all there is, is the Absolute. And even in the relative, they perceive this just the absolute. Then relative and absolute lose their meanings and their distinctions. You see. It happens very naturally. They don't be a person in the absolute is not possible. The person is living in the relative, and it's an idea in the relative perceived in the fullness of your seeing. They don't go and fight wars in your mind. Leave it, leave it to the God Self, and everything becomes a harmony. You see, everything becoming a harmony. You don't have to work anything out. You just keep looking from the deeper place, in which even the sense of presence is seen, and the sense of person is seen. But the person and the activities of the person is losing its virility, its fight, its aggress- its aggressiveness. It's tranquilized by real seeing, and it merges in the deep. You see, so all these divisions they they are just becoming like one soup of sensations, God's minestrone. Okay, you don't have to worry about that. If you stay in your mind, innumerable shadows you are fighting with. Yeah, you get no rest. Everybody is tired. Hmm? Nobody yeah. is in peace. No one is remaining or resting in peace. You have to go to the cemetery to see rest in peace. And even there, they are not in peace. Even there, they are not in peace. As long as you have this identity with you, it is going to raise some little trouble, some doubt and so on. But when you are discovering more deeply, not as a mental um, conviction or an intellectual conviction, but an experiential recognition. You are grounded. What you discover is who you are. What you know and what you are are one thing. It's simple. But you have discovered the ground, okay? and in a sense, as soon as it is discovered, and it's not anymore just a belief, it is a knowing and a being, hmm? like this, then you must continue to keep watching Whenever the mind comes, the reflex to go back into identity, you must keep on watching and confirm, is this true? This is just another movement watched in the place of the witnessing. And like this, each time you apply your seeing, you know, like this, uh, you experience the sense of transcending, of coming out of the shadow of those things. And gradually they weaken and weaken, and you're not resolve, it's not your resolve, your experience is that I'm always here in this stable place, you see. And these are movement, poo, 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 poo. and this dynamic activity is kind of like anchored, rooted in the harmony of the self. It is simple. Try it and see. I don't want to say too much about it, because once you get the key point, I prefer to leave you to the adventure of your discovering. I don't want, if I talk too much, it's like I'm giving you, you should do or not. I don't want to interfere. It's too nice to discover it. And it will continue to, to reveal its beautiful fruits. Stay there. Don't go into the attic. Uh, stay into the very ground of being. How far is the ground of being? Where is it? How much more travel you must do to be here, in the place I've pointed to? I'm here. You are here. You see? No journey required. 
just a twist of consciousness. I'm just here. When we ask at first, you spend so much time in identification with your, the mind and identity, person and so on, then you are asked simply, but is there an obs a capacity to observe this or not? And then it is, rec yes, it can be observed. Instantly, as soon as you recognize and confirm, it can be observed. It becomes like a movie on a screen for you. More and more, you see. And that's that gap between the thing seen and the place of seeing. This sense becomes something more spacious for you. It is simple. I've given it enough. You can watch these videos anytime you want. They're free and available all the time. Find one that really touches you, and, uh, or a section that touches you, and keep playing and listening until it just becomes clear. But don't just keep listening to your mind, because it is not going to support anything that appears to threaten its existence. When I speak about the mind, I'm not talking about mind in its universal functioning, but mind in terms of identity. It's not good for you. If you lock yourself in the small box of the mind, uh, identity, trouble comes into your life. Thank you. May I have a hug? Uh, later. Okay. Yeah. I have some fish to catch. Okay, <laughs> this one. Um. <sighs> Beloved Master. <laughs> And my father, uh, thank you so much uh, to call me. Um, it's like this. Um, my heart is very... <laughs> um, it's like this. Um, sorry for this question, because I know that you are the truth. Uh, I, I have no doubt in that. I love you so much. You are so inside of me. Something. I just love you so much, but uh, that's why I'm a little bit like I know that this is the mind. I already know. I already kiss. I'm blessed by your grace because I already kissed just a little bit of God. But I know that I'm God. I know. I know the place. Uh, it's. I cannot explain. It's so. Yeah. <laughs> But that's why, when I'm doing the invitation, I normally do once or twice a day. But now it's very different. Since a day that at three o'clock in the morning, I wake up and I do the invitation, and I was like, in that, it was so beautiful, so was that. And, uh, and when my mind came, I looked to the hours and it was six o'clock. Was so blissful. I don't know. It's some. It's you. <laughs> uh, and and then since that day, the day is. Uh, I was trying to do the invitation. The words. I was like, yeah, but this is. Uh, I don't need to do this. And then I put observing, but this is my mind that is talking. Uh, and then I, some part of the invitation, when you say, is that a feeling? And I say, no, it's not a feeling. But, and after comes another feeling word, uh, that means uh, it's a bad feeling. And then I said, but it's no a feeling, bad or wrong, or it's nothing. It's nothing like that. Uh, and then I, I, I start like, okay, but I feel pushed to do the invitation because I want to be in, 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 in presence all the time. But then even this is not that. I don't need to do that. I just be quiet and still. So, but sometimes 
Do you need to even be quiet and still? No. Okay. <laughs> the reason why I say, because all these things imply a doer of them. Yes. You see? Now, I'm very careful because sometimes we have some very sharp intellects and go, ah, yeah, there's nothing I have to do, there's nothing I have to go, nothing I have to do, nothing, nothing needs to happen. I'm already that, I can never not be that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you see? But still, there's a funny smell. You see? Yeah, mm. that's why I'm talking. <laughs> ah, when you are able to smell your own breath, you see? Because and then, it is why I pointed, sometimes something is saying, but I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. And who is speaking even, I don't need to or I need to? Is it the self that is saying, I don't need to do that? I don't need to do the invitation? No. 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 Like this you catch him. Because if you identify with that voice, you will stop doing the invitation and you will be the one that you will say to people, Yes, the day I gave up the invitation, <laughs> I gave up seeking. And I said, Who, who gave up seeking? Did the truth give up? Did the truth say I gave up seeking, or I stopped it, or I started it? Watch it. Very sneaky is the mind. I said that even so, that this egoic identity is so subtle it can go behind the eyeballs of the seer and say, "Look, nah." But in your earnestness, something, huh? and you flick him out, you'll catch him. Because it cannot exist and get away with anything in the presence of that which alone exists. Because it is a thing and you are not. That's subtle. He will catch the ego with all his claims. And the ego knows what to say, you know? In the temptation of Jesus in the desert, hmm? the devil know the Bible as well, he know the scriptures. <laughs> it is written. Hmm? He know the scripture also. Your mind knows the kind of kind of huh? Yes, look, you know, empty. Nothing exists but you. You think, yeah. <laughs> Nothing exists but me. But what kind of me? Very much a something me. And then you recognize that's a voice. It is not the self confirming itself. This is how subtle your seeing become, your ability become, that subtle. And like this, you have used the mind well, because it has played as your friend and your adversary, and you need this to transcend. When Christ says, I have overcome the world, means I have transcended this in all his play, every trick, every little hello, hi, come, everything you see in and come to see, yes, yes, you know. So this with this same wisdom you are coming to see. Because uh, he's there in the invitation too, listening too. <laughs> Sitting inside your ears. Listening, yeah, but you didn't understand that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand that. <laughs> keep quiet. Just keep observing. There is a joy, a real joy and peace in being present as presence itself observing and recognizing all the different movements of mind, but not getting identified with any of them, 
and the show is soon over. Don't worry. But don't determine when it will be over. You just continue being here. There is no movie for the self. Meaning, though there is seeing, there is no story, not invested in any story. It's not trying to be free. It is so free, it doesn't even care about free. As long as there is this, yes, but, and can I come a bit closer, and I'm getting there, this is not the self. This is the, the imagined self in its imagined journey to meet uh, the imagined Absolute as an imagined thing. Mm -hmm. Just simple thing in them points, and you can confirm. Everybody can confirm. So you may wake up, and usually you do say your, your invitation, you say, I enjoy getting up at three o'clock, and then after a while you don't feel like, you know, something says, Now you know, why, you know, take a bit more sleep. I feel, yeah, it's raining, I'm going to sleep. Is there a problem? No, no problem. No problem. No problem. Only if the voice that's speaking, you're believing it to be, you know, yes, I've done it, I'm finished, what's the point? Watch him, very sneaky. Yeah, but I'm not thinking in that. When I. Because I know. I feel it that I must do the invitation uh, because I'm not there. I know that uh, I have tasted some things, but um, at the end of the invitation, whether you're listening something, listening, or reading the book, at the end you put the book down, take your earphones off. What are you? At the end of the invitation, it is complete now. You followed. It's brought you to where. Who are you? What remains now? I'm just um, there, Pacific, tranquil. Mm. Is there something saying, but you're not done? No, nothing. Just, no, no. Just being. So where does the thoughts come, but you're not done? Hmm? Meaning that somehow, if there's interest, keep going to those thoughts, then it will give the appearance that something is not done. But the self is not about being done or not done. Can you confirm or not? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not making any statement, so it's like, hooray. <laughs> you know? What's the other thing? Eureka! We have got it. On top of the mountain, put your flag. There's nothing like that. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. And yet the mind somehow is saying, yeah, but if it's nothing, what's the point? If it's nothing, how can nothing make you happy? How can nothing give you peace? You came for peace. Maybe some cities as well too. But nothing? You all this for nothing? Are you crazy? And something may be there to go, yes. It's Hmm. Are you forgetting your purpose? Remember you have a purpose in life? Oh. <laughs> Can you follow the invitation? Can you follow my pointings? until there is no one left to follow. Yes. Mm. When Sri Ramana Maharshi was asked for how long should we keep inquiring, he said, inquire until there is no one left to inquire. As the one who is inquiring is disappearing in the inquiry, then who is there left to say, I got it? But. If you hold identity, fear will come. It will tell you, Phew. you know, once you go there, there's no coming back. And that sounds scary to who? To the idea you're holding on to of yourself, which is not yourself. Yeah. 
if you have finished your invitation, you should not be holding any assessment in you. There should not be any assessment such as, you know, wow, I'm getting nearer, I, that was a really nice, this was a nice listening this morning. Oh, this morning's listening was really good. No, watch it, you know. No, there isn't, there isn't. When there isn't. we finish, the, yeah. no, after. When uh, there is an after emptiness? No. Oh, okay. I just want to know after where? Where is the after yeah. emptiness? <laughs> yes, these things will come up, of course, but they are not about this. The momentum of previous thinking, they will come from time to time. You must not be too disappointed about that. Hmm? In fact, it is good because it will test your discernment. It will test your any claim you make will be tested in, in the field of the dynamic. In the field of life, something will get tested, and it is good. Welcome it, so because you are just sharpening your dharma, dharma eye. You can say everything you are using somehow. It is just somehow becoming more refined, more beautiful. The, as long as you got the body, the body is there, the consciousness is there, the life force is there. Then use it for this refining. It's a kind of refining, refining, refining. It is a kind of maturing, yet at the same time, it is a maturing against a background of unchanging awareness. It's a paradox. Who experienced this? Who experienced this thing? Hmm? Not one hand, I see. That somehow it appears as though something keeps deepening, and yet the awareness is, is not deepening, is not deep, it's not shallow. It's not more to the left, it's not inside or outside. Where is it? So, if what I'm speaking is too strange for you, no, no, no. I don't know where to go. We've got two more days after today. Don't doubt your seeing. Forces are arising to make you doubt your seeing or to doubt my voice. But I've not asked you to believe in me. No, I say, use the seeing and see, and they are quick enough. You have wasted a lot of time with other foolish things. So then see if what I'm speaking to you is going to be a waste of time, then it will only be one day, because I don't expect it should take you more than that, at least to be confirmed that this is real. And thereafter, you may need to spend some time stabilizing the mind, stabilizing the mind in this. That somehow it seems paradoxically to take a little time to stabilize in the timeless. But it's not a dream anymore. You have tasted yourself and you are something, you in the seeker mode, is feeling more and more drawn into your own essence. And something wants guarantee. Will I still exist in my essence? What do you want to exist as? Nothing and everything or Mr. Mind? So, as you are going, grace is with you and something is refining in the right speed for each one, in accordance with your temperament and your capacity. Don't worry, you are in the hands of God. You are in the hands of grace, if you are concerned. Okay? So don't think you are going to get a whack on the head and thrown into this ocean. No, it's fine, at your own speed. Some people will absorb these pointings and see them very quickly. Chuk, 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 chuk. I recognize them also. And others will keep coming back and keep talking about the things, what their mind is saying, and why don't I help them to get rid of their mind, and this type of stuff. And that may take a little bit, it may maybe feel like a slower uh, dissolution. And others it will be, ah, still they will have to spend time to, to stabilize the attention and so on. And that time is necessary and helpful. It's not a failure. Even if you are experiencing some difficulty, some fire burning, some, uh, don't look at it as a negative. It, all this burning, don't give it to your mind to say, Mind, please tell me what this is. 
If there's a sense of burning inside, it's okay. It's grace, acid grace. <laughs> burning things that dwell in the shadow that you have not recognized. Take everything as the gift of God. Transform this way of looking at things like, oh, it's no good, oh, no, not good, no. Because if you think like that, you will feel cursed. You will tell people, oh, this, get rid of this bad luck, and I'm having bad luck. That is not your way. Transcend. Everything that comes, you look. But look at it, now you can. Look at it with greater power and authority, because you are not looking at it personally. The whole world is suffering from person poison. Too much person, too personal. When you discover and are discovering the fullness of consciousness, it is not personal. But then you may think, but the person has so much sweetness and so much passion, you know? And you, oh, you know, but I don't want to get rid of my passion. I said, all of this is nonsense. You're coming into a field of clarity and peace. Clarity and peace. And it, you naturally are attracted to it in your heart. The only one who is not attracted to it is the one who is possessed by the devil in their mind. They have lost their powers to discern correctly. Don't be like them. To be at peace and to feel joy and openness and trust, these are your natural perfume. You are naturally attracted. You don't have to ask anyone, should I be attracted to this? Just like if you are healthy or if you feel sick and you have never been sick before and there is nobody to ask about it, you don't need anyone to tell you something is out of balance, something doesn't feel right. These are intuitive for you. In the same way, when something is right and helpful and deep and true, you don't need outer confirmation, you know inside. Unless you have a strong desire for something and then you uh, and but it's not peaceful. It's not peaceful. For a time it may seem the attention is oscillating between Personhood and presence, personhood and presence. But there is another place in which even this swing of opposites is watched from the place of the real. It is not invested, it is just see, it is the automatic scene. It doesn't have to go, it doesn't have to wear spectacles, it doesn't need binoculars, it doesn't need eyes to see. I am not going to talk any more about that now. It's clear for you again? Yeah, yes. Thank you and sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Let me see if I can catch a letter or, or two for now. Another little. <coughs> Dearest Muji Baba, thank you for your generous pointings, so clear and full. I remain in my truest self more and more as a result of the direct experience of myself through the invitation. It brings much relief. It should not only bring relief, but release. Relief uh, need not be just uh, temporary. If real understanding happens, something is just freed up through true seeing. I continue. In my dynamic existence, I work full-time in the medical field and have two small children and a household to run. I often find my days have fallen to the mind work of planning. Sorry. I often find my days have fallen to the mind work of planning, analyzing and diagnosing and treating patients and relating very often with beings who are very much caught in person, po person poison. 
it seems time and mind catches me hostage. It seems as though the mind and time puts me into hostage place. I can more remain as the isness in the midst and move from this place, but I wonder if you have any guidance on how to remain, especially in the realm of a type of work that is so scientifically based, where I find I have to be so analytical and accountable and to also complete, complete ongoing study which now feels like I am feeding the mind. With deep gratitude and love to you and all the beings physically there and online, like myself, following and honoring your guidance. Sophie, I just want to come back here and repeat something. I can more remain as the isness in the midst and move from this place, but I wonder if you have any guidance on how to remain on how to remain. This question on how to remain can only be there if you have the sense of the person who must do something. But it's the attention and the intelligence of being is hearing, stay here, keep quiet, like this. But don't create a self to do that. The intelligence knows and hears this. So, if you have any guidance on how to remain, especially in the realm of a type of work that is so scientifically based. I want to tell you something, it's a good point, that as you become more and more clear and rooted in the truth of your discovery, that you are actually not even, you're not even witnessing. Witnessing doesn't burn energy for you, because there's no personal identity behind it. When there's identity doing something, it takes tremendous energy. You feel tired and exhausted. You feel bored and, you know, this. But when the witnessing is not got a witnesser as an entity witnessing. Can anybody hear what I'm speaking? Yeah. It's just like the witnessing is coming out of some vastness. Have you experienced this? That there is not a person witnessing anymore. It is like, it's like, you're looking out from the vastness. It has no organs behind it. It has no head behind it and ears and hair cut and all these things. It's like the vastness. It's just everything is appearing in a kind of vastness. And while the body is here, the vastness feels like it's, it's here also. It, it doesn't make sense. Maybe the scientists will say, but how is it possible? We have met now some great scientists have been coming to satsang, and their research is corresponding. They're telling me, what you're saying is what we are finding out also. I wonder if you have any guidance on how to remain. If I tell you how to remain, you're going to get tired. You follow? You're, no, 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 remain. Sometime I may say, no, no, don't go with that. Stay as the awareness. Is that a burden? I didn't say become awareness. I say remain as you are. So especially in the realm of a type of work that is so scientifically based, where I find I have to be so analytical and accountable and to also complete on the on ongoing study, which now feels like I'm feeding the mind. As soon as you are more resolved, keep doing your work, but keep checking in, and you see that you come to an effortless awareness. Once this is clear for you, it has the power to bless every aspect of your expression automatically and to send energy to them. Not personal energy, pure energy, divine energy, so that you may find that you can do lots of work, we don't get tired. Maybe you don't even need to sleep so much. When you have ego, you have to sleep a lot. You may find you don't need to sleep so much. 
you may find that you, all this work is going on, but it doesn't feel like work. It feels like your life is wind assisted by grace. Has anybody discovered this or not? I know that there are more. Come on, tell me. Yes, because you know what? Uh, I'm not asking you to cheer a leader or something. I'm just asking, give me some response because I know that what I'm speaking is being absorbed in many people. Oh, okay. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so that's all that needs to be looked at here. In all of this, that needs to be looked at here is that stop. Uh, look and see that sometimes when you're speaking, check from where you're speaking. You're speaking from a personal perspective, or is this coming from the weakness? And you'll soon find out where to keep your energy. If you're, if you're coming from the person, you're hemorrhaging energy. If you're looking from the place of awareness, it's, you can confirm it is effortless. Very simple thing. My point is very simple, very simple. Let me try another one here. No, no, no. Quickly, no? Mm. Long ones I don't like so much, you know. Okay. Which one I should read? And that's it. This one, this one, this one, this one. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Hey dear Muji, thank you for this wonderful Rishikesh season. I have been following your teachings online for a while, but unable to recognize myself as awareness. Yes. We're not going to recognize yourself as awareness if you feel that you are yourself as a person. You have to let go or suspend the identity with personhood for a moment, so that you give your seeing a chance to be just empty. Then you, from the emptiness, you can confirm and see and verify that awareness it cannot be other than yourself. But if you're looking with the shape of a person to try and find a no person is not going to work. <clears throat> I have a question about invitation. Please help. In invitation when you ask to drop everything and check what remains. I ask that. I ask you to leave everything or drop everything. In invitation when you ask to drop everything and check what remains. Okay. If I say leave everything, leave everything but don't remain as a lever of everything. It's subtle, subtle, subtle. You with me or not? Yeah. Leave everything, but don't identify as the lever of things. Okay? So empty, 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 empty. Sometimes you think you're empty, but you're still holding on to something. And that is going to show up soon. Okay? Now, in invitation, when you ask to drop everything and to check what remains, my findings, and now outlining, what is there in front of my eyes and sounds and whatever experience is going on remains along with the sense I exist. It remains. A sound comes. The sound remains. Or the memory of the sound remains. You see, this is what I ask, you know. You say, what is finding? What is there in front of my eyes and sounds and whatever experience is going on remains along with the sense I exist? You see? So all these things that the senses are picking up and even the I exist feeling is also there's awareness of the I exist feeling. You know, I really want to sit and talk with you. I don't, I'm not here preaching to you. We're just, now these days, I want to just see if we can talk and refine some subtle things you not understand. So I just want to see if we're getting somewhere or not. I, I exist feels like a sense arising out of or personal to this body. The I exist feels like a sense arising out of or personal to this body. So something is aware of that. Is that thing also arising? So I wonder if you are following enough. Next point. My experience and the feeling sense of I exist are all perceived, but I cannot find 
or sense what perceive it. Because there is, you are still keeping an identity to see if you can look for what is perceiving it. So you want to find something that is perceiving everything. I wonder if you can see the mistake. Then how to abide as that awareness which perceives everything? Who is going to abide there? Does it need any friend? Does it open the door to customers, come and abide here in awareness? Is there not just the awareness? I am just this awareness also, in which the sense of myself speaking here is also playing and happening. And I am in here too. But I lose nothing of my wholeness by appearing in this dynamic place. I never can come out of myself. I is who that can come out of myself. These were old dreams I had, and those dreams are over. Next point. I wanted to ask this question in person, but unfortunately my desire for travel didn't materialize. Much love and regards to you and your entire team for this satsang season and live streaming. Thank you. Neil from the United States. Neil. The mind must kneel to the heart. It's still up there talking, yes, what I should do and tell me where I should go and so on, like this. And something is aware of that, but is still giving power to that and not looking at the power that it itself is that gives light to even perceive that. You see? I wonder. Can I try with just one more and then we see one more, one quick one? You're so lazy. Oh my God, that's right, simple. Namaste to all. Just wondering what I should do when this orientation occurs to the falling away of the ego. So the ego seems to be thinning away, and some sense of disorientation eh, eh, is only an effect in consciousness, being also observed. Hmm? But if there's subtle falling away, and you identify, you feel, oh, what's happening to me? And uh, no, just uh, you're just observing a sense of maybe some sense of dizziness. Don't make a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Uh, we're giving. We're too easily caught. Too easily caught in our attention by little stray things passing. Uh, so the mind, when you're coming in, closing down in your seeing, you see. The mind starts to throw stones in the bush. So you, oh, what was that? And, the and then you are distracted from your seeing because your attention is too gullible. Somebody goes, and uh, yes, sorry, and you forget. You forget yourself even. <laughs> this thing is happening still. Hmm? But the more you are paying attention to what I'm pointing, it's like you are nothing. It's like you are nothing. Is that an insulting thing to say to you? No. Come to zero without the shape of zero, okay? Now your mind is going to try to do it. Hmm? Our private Google. Hmm. Zero. He says, Come to zero. I came to zero. And I still could not see. This is, this is, you see, as you are waking up to the truth, you actually begin to see how silly the mind is, actually. It is true. You see how, f <laughs> how fickle and silly. And we have been living like this for how long? Maybe lifetimes. How much trouble we cause. You know there should be a law for disturbing yourself? <laughs> I think we'd all be in jail though. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Just wondering what I should do when disorientation occurs due to the falling away of ego. I find that many interests that I once had 
that used to be very egocentric have fallen away. What a blessing. I fleetingly thought that it may be a depression reoccurring as when I had the condition my interest fell away and I felt very restricted and low. Did you get that? Yes. You did? I didn't. I can read it again. <laughs> Sorry. I fleetingly thought, so I momentarily thought, that it may be a depression reoccurring as when I had the condition my interest fell away and I felt very restricted and low. Ah, I see, I got him now. So, it, it, you know, you're wondering, is it a depression because all my interests seem to be going? You know, so the mind says, oh, you're depressed, you know, look what that happened to you now, you know. All your interests have gone and you look how low you're feeling and so on. So, However, this current lack of interest is not claustrophobic. It is just clear and open. But there is a lack of drive into interests that seem to make no sense to me anymore. Can we relate? Yes. Thank you. I spend quite I spend quite I spend quite a bit he says a butt of time, sorry. I spend quite a bit of time just sitting in silence, not wanting any stimulus at all. Okay? I can see in my parents' eyes her concern. Oh no, my partner's eyes. So I'm sorry. I must be a bit tired, you know. I can see in my partner's eyes her concern. Mm, you know? But I have nothing to say as if I say I've lost interest in most things, it will freak her out. So your partner now is looking and you know and saying, What's happening, darling? And you say, Listen, I have no interest in anything really. <laughs> we can relate sometimes? Okay, okay. I remember that Muji said that each awakening is different, but I would assume almost all awakened beings go through disorientation of some kind. Yes. Something, some questions come, maybe some doubts, maybe some turbulence, and blah, 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 but they stayed, come back to being anchored and looking again. You have to be shaken, you will be tested. Huh? Otherwise, if everything has to be nice and sweet for you, you have no power. Hmm? So I remember that Muji said that each awakening is different, meaning that it plays out in its unique way. But I would assume almost all awakened beings go through disorientation sorry, of some kind. My question is, how does one stay oriented during this time? Sincere kindness and gratitude, etcel, etcel, etcel. My question is, how does one stay oriented during this time? Who is asking this question? Is this question for the Self? For the pure Self? Does it have to stay oriented? How does one stay oriented during this time? Who is asking the question also? Again, the identity is asking the question. But identity is observable or not? Yeah. You can feel that the question is coming from identity or not? Yes. yes. So therefore, it is not to be relied on. It will feel like this one moment, feel like something else, another moment, and you can't keep up with the amount of uh, pressures it brings onto itself. But you can look, you can say, okay, now the question is asked, how do I stay oriented uh, during this time? And if I were to say, well, what you do, then in a way, I'm supporting the identity. You follow? If I were to say, then this is what you do, then I'm, I'm reinforcing your identity, that there you are someone to do something. I said, no, watched from awareness, what do you have to do? So uh, my feeling is that I would encourage, please listen to these talks again and again. And slowly, slowly you find, oh, yes, yes, it becomes clear, not just mentally, but it's clearing. 
your being feels clear, light, open. And you just keep doing this. There's a hand way at the back there. You want to come, someone? Was there somebody over here holding hand? No? It's fine. And they, well, I already called someone from here. And okay. Yeah, maybe you come because they're very slow coming to the mic, so you can come. Where is Shiva? Shiva, little Jesus? Yeah? Where is Shiva? Where are you, Shiva? Um, who is going to get there first now? Uh, Yes, thank you. Namaste, Guruji. Namaste. <clears throat> I would just like to confirm this um, sense that the conscious presence is like a testimony to my absolute being. Prior to um, this season and what's occurred in this season, there was some sense of duality between like Nirguna Brahman or Sarguna Brahman or you know the unmanifest and manifest of myself and I can say with the deepest gratitude that I feel that that's just dropped away and um, I can just see how in this true place, like I've never been touched, and it's never like nothing of this manifest world has ever affected me. But also, there is a dynamic uh, yes. arena, no? Yes. And is that to be dismissed? Absolutely not. Cynically, like, well, now I found I'm the absolute thing. Now you know, well, the world doesn't exist, family doesn't exist, and you, no, no. In that arena also, you exist also in form and you must, you must move in your formful realm with the deep wisdom that arises from the formless. You know. Somehow it's a different, a different driver of this vehicle. It is not the person anymore. A wisdom is here now. And life is not anymore a crisis for you. Do we follow? It is not a crisis anymore. It's a crisis when the person is in the driving seat. Hmm? Yes. Uh, I used to do something. I don't know if it, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but when I was, me and my children were a little bit, uh, you know, like uh, eight years old. And my my son loved the idea. Tra driving. He's always answering, I can't have a drive, Daddy. So I put him in the car, we go to one place into the open field, put him in the thing and we started to say drive, you know, and then you do this and you stare and he's ah, ah, ah. And I'm, I'm on the thing, you know. So he feels he's driving. But I'm every occasion I touching the thing and slowing down and things like this. Even on the road I did it a few times, you know, in the night. In the night. My point is, something is feeling, the sense of the person is feeling, I am living my life and doing it. If it's arrogant, something will let it play as though and get into its own trouble. We have to get burnt a little bit. But uh, somehow grace uh, is holding you. And the more that you are in the place of a sense of personhood, but in a sattvic state, then more and more something is uh, caring for this life. You have come to satsang. In these satsangs, it is not a theory satsang. It is very much more stressed upon experience and direct looking, direct understanding, experiential seeing, like that. And now something can confirm, but uh, there is this state, which is, is, is not even a state. It is like a stateless state. Other states may come and go in it, but it does not come and go. You see? And so now from here I can see in my dynamic expression hmm, that it looks very different from previous way. 
Previous way, life was felt like, you know, so busy, so much, uh -huh. but now my world is not so cluttered anymore because my eyes are functioning from a deeper place. You see? Here there's a total stillness, there's no history in my absoluteness. There's no history and there's no need for future. It, it just is. And yet all things arise from here and exist and display themselves in front of this. But this does not move about, does not. You become clear about this. But your dynamic self also, if there's not, uh, there's reduced interest a little bit, no? Work is being done and the work now is in service to a heightened sense of consciousness, a more beautiful uh, arena, in a sense. You are contributing to the joy, the lightness, the, the beauty of your world. But you are not deeply emotionally invested in it. Would I be right in that? Uh, yes, I yeah. feel that was the first thing. Like already life was so imbued by this love, so yeah. that was very much functioning. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, the inner environment is so spacious, a lot of things are done dynamically yes. for sure. So you'll feel that you don't need to be planning your existence. Because if you're planning your existence, you know, somehow you're interfering with a natural rhythm. When I say that life takes care of life, if you're too much planning, you're in your person, in your mind. And uh, life is not here simply to fulfill your projections, which are based on fear and desire. Would you agree or not? So as we are coming out of this personhood mode and functioning more from witnessing consciousness and from the root consciousness or pure awareness, everything is changing. The world is not so frantic. It's not so, you see, the more uh, wherever you go is like a garden grows there. Of course, I still speak about that there are energies that will still show up to try and... It's like that in the world, actually. It doesn't matter if you are doing good or bad. Those energies are playing. How much room they have to play inside this system of consciousness or that one will depend on some things, grace of God, you may say. But more and more, there is less and less of that, and more of that constancy, that untroubled ocean of grace and peace and love. This Your life is like this more and more. There is no need to say any fixed thing about it. You are simply here. And even if you could not speak, the influence of your presence is already shaping things around you, blessing your world, blessing the world. I don't know if this was what you intuitively, some urge was pulling towards this, or if you had a projection or a picture of what did you want to achieve through spirit. But I would say the best thing is to, uh, that as you are discovering, all your pictures and projections are dissolving and what is unfolding is enough. It is charged with love and peace more and more. Hmm. And Guruji I really do feel like this dissolving and offering basically all my suffering <laughs> up into this it was really the best way I could thank you for what you do for all of us and being here with this family and feeling the power and the love is you know you've mentioned about Christ like someone just forgot themselves so completely in this world that we can't forget about them and I just see how you were the example for myself to see that it was possible and you never told me I was anything different than you. And I just believed you as much as I could until it just verified itself. And I'm so grateful for you 
and I'm just to see the power of one being just forgetting themselves in that way and then coming into being what doesn't need to be remembered like and the power and like all the love we share with one another like it I can't help but serve that in whatever way that looks like I don't know but I just know that whatever this form is for the rest of its life like I I don't have anything but love and for service for this truth then this is the fruit from the tree of God this is the fruit it says by their fruits yes by their fruits you will know them a bad tree cannot bear good fruit and a good tree cannot bear bad fruit by their fruit you shall know them. And even if you don't speak, this grace, this grace will flow through your pores. You see, it is not just in words. Words are easy, we are accustomed to words, we are skilled with words. But your words and your understanding must combust into spirit from where they originally arose and shower blessings and benevolence in the world without any sense of specialness or pride. That is the fruit of God. That is the fruit of God. And that is all I need to tell you, because, you know, that which you have discovered is not just, I say, it's unchanging, and yet its perfume continues to just yield deeper and deeper understanding and deeper and purer and purer fruit. That will be your adventure. Your adventure, and yet also you are the… Un this is why I say, how paradoxical, that there continues to be, while the body is still here and the consciousness is here and the vital force is here, there will continue to be a maturing for you, a deepening against the background of unchanging awareness. Only the one in the experience of this can confirm this. To the one who is only in the mind, they will think, oh, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That's how it will feel, you see. So I'm so happy to get the feedback because for years I've been trying to share. I think now I'm coming more into a season when I want to listen. My mouth is tired. I want to listen to what you have found, to what you're finding, what you are discovering. This is what was happening now. More and more, I feel yes, we have put something has become more refined by God's grace, more and more refined, it's come. Huh? That those that He has prepared for this season to listen and to hear and to merge inside their own heart, where you will find Him who is one with you. Hmm? That it has refined the teachings. I told you that not so long ago, maybe, uh, maybe even maybe one hundred years ago, maybe a bit more, it used to be the tradition in this country, at least, that you would spend at least twelve years in the presence of an awakened being uh, before you even got the instructions. Even as I said to you, this was never an evangelical path of millions of people, but it seemed like it was a high path that was for few. Why? Is it because it's so amazingly unusual? No, because it's so amazingly simple. <laughs> and the mind of the person and the ego is not attracted to such simplicity. And as I said, that that which is, is simple, but the one trying to find it is complex. 
is full of their own noise and are more attracted to things about doing and doing and becoming and, and all of this. So not naturally so attracted. So I don't know where all of you come from. I don't know how it came because just like it arose here, I did not know anything about this teaching at all. But grace brought you to this place. Grace brought me to the feet of Papaji. Grace brought you here, and it is taking care of you. This is what I wanted to share with you. You see? And so, if you don't feel to concentrate on me, you can forget about me. I'm fine with this. But focus on the words because they are useful to you until you can go beyond the need for help if you want. I have not come here to, to increase membership. <laughs> I, I prefer a little, no, no, no. Okay? Make use of it, hmm? and I am already happy. Make use of it. More free beings in the world, well, very, very good already. Already so good. Already so good. And we find that more and more people in office and people, even some politicians, are expressing some interest. They want to listen to these things to see if it can be of help, you know. And I hope more and more people from all walks of life, you come, just find this, you can go. You don't have to wear red or orange or white or something. You don't have to look like anything other than yourself. And it's fine. There are no conditions to fulfill, to say, yes, 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 yes. I feel to be with me in where I live and so on, I will require some, you know, that you are really are someone who is really here for truth. But it's open, open feel for everybody. There's no one in my heart who is exempt from the truth. And so, may I say something small about that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Just how much I feel like all of the sangha, anybody who's met you or been exposed to you, I truly feel in my heart like this was not a path that I was on for much of my life and then a you know grace was obviously working along the way but with you i just feel that all it was was just an openness and a yearning for what's true and you give it to us like so directly and i feel like god isn't holding out on anybody like it's given and it's offered yeah it's offered not given it is offered uh, you must receive. To give means that you had no choice. Uh, but it's offered in the play of life, you know. And this game can go on. I don't know for how long. Hmm? But uh, realizing the self is not putting an end to the world. It beautifies the world. One day, maybe you have to leave all these things. We don't know. But uh, you are just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have to stop now for today. I feel. Oh, okay, okay, come, okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Pranam. Beloved Mujiji. My love, my love. Nine years. Nine years I see you Nine first years. time. Ah. I came to with one request. Nine years before Babaji, Arunachala called me Maya. And I feel I'm Arunachala Shiva Maya. But I come to ask you my name. You come to ask me for another name? To check in. To check in. Ah. And to confirm. 
your name is the nameless one. If I could give anybody name, it's the nameless one. <laughs> the nameless one, no? Yes. Hmm? Before any name can come, that is there. Before any name, before the first word, they say the word created the world. Before the word, it is there. Before the first word was born, or even the first thought, he is there. Yeah. He is there. Mm -hmm. Inside me, I feel I am only talking to you nine years. The vastness that the mind perceives is not the true vastness. The vastness in which the mind itself is seen, that is the real. The vastness that the mind projects and sees is not the true vastness. The vastness in which the mind itself is seen, this is the real. Somebody coming in. As we are getting ready, I just want to just read just one or two verses from the Shtavakra Gita. I pick it up already in flight. Meditate on the Self, one without two, exalted awareness. Give up the illusion of a separate Self. Give up the feeling within or without that you are this or that. My child, because you think you are the body, for a long time you have felt bound. Know you are pure awareness. With this knowledge as your sword, cut through your chains and be happy. For you are already free, without action or flaw, luminous and bright. You are bound only by the habit 
of thinking and meditation. Your nature is pure awareness. You are flowing in all things, and all things are flowing in you. But beware the narrowness of mind. You are always the same, unfathomable awareness, limitless and free, serene and unperturbed. Desire only your own awareness. Whatever take form is false, only the formless endures. When you understand the truth of this teaching, you will not be born again. For God is infinite, within the body and without, like a mirror and the image in a mirror. As the air is everywhere flowing around a pot and filling it, so God is everywhere, filling all things and flowing through them forever. Thank you.
Deputado, né? Ha, <laughs> ha, 